Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 177. Please turn to it. Page number 177. The very first problem that you see there on the page. Problem number 175. Let's see what it has to say. It's actually a pretty straightforward, simple problem. We are given two circles here, a small circle and a large circle. And they are looking for the area of the ring. They are looking for the area of the ring. And we are told that from here to here, the radius of the small circle we are told is 8. And The, it goes on to tell you that the, the circular is surrounded by a circular path that is 3 feet wide. Well, it's surrounded by a circular path that is 3 feet wide. This is the circular path that they're talking about. And they're looking for the circular path, which means, which means this distance right here. Let's, let's give them names so we can talk about them. So A to B. A to B is 3. B to C, we are told, is 8, which is the radius of the inner circle. And we just have to figure out the area of the area of the ring, which is very straightforward. Area of the ring, area of the ring that they're talking about, which they refer to as the circular path, is simply the is simply the area of the large circle minus the area of the small circle. Area of the large circle <coughs> is pi r squared. The radius of the large circle is going to be from A to C. The radius of the large circle is from A to C, which is simply 3 plus 8. 3 plus 8, that's the radius of the large circle. So it's simply pi times eight, uh, 11 squared, pi times 11 squared, and 11 squared is 121, so it's 121, 121 pi. Area of the small circle, again, the radius of the small circle is right here. Radius of the small circle is from B to C which is 8. So it's pi r squared, the radius, the radius of the small circle, which is pi times 8 squared, which is 64 pi. That's all it is. We are done. So it's 121, 121 minus 64, and whatever that works out to be. 11 minus 4 is, 11 minus 4 is going to be 7, and 11 minus 5 is going to be, 11 minus 6 is going to be 5. Looks like uh, 57 pi is the answer. 57 pi is the area of the area of the circular path or area of the ring as they call it. That was the end of that part. Let's move on then to something more interesting. As I said, that was too simple, that was too childish. Number 176. Number 176. In 176, we are told that we have a positive integer n is divisible by 25. Now before we go any further, what does it mean when we are told that a number is divisible by some other number? If I, if I tell you, if I tell you that 15 is divisible by 3, what does it mean? It means if, 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 if we are told that 15 is divisible by 3, what they're telling you is that the top number divided by bottom number will result in an integer. It will be a whole number. That's what it means. n is divisible by 25, we are told. So we know now that n divided by 25 would have to be some integers. Of course, we don't know what that integer is, but it's got to be a whole number. It cannot be decimal. It cannot be fraction. n divided by 25 is a whole number. That's what we are told. We are also Then they go on to tell us that if if 
if the square root of n is more than 25, then which could be the value of this quantity n over 25? So knowing that square root of n is more than 25, can we, can we tell which of the following could be the value of n over 25? Now when they tell you which of the following could be, they're giving you five answer choices obviously and four of them cannot be. So let's, let's actually list all of them, a, b, c, d and e. <coughs> and they go on from all the way 23, 24, 25, 26, 22, 23, 24. 4, 25 and 26. Let's see what we can do. So we know we know that square root of n, the square root of n we are told has to be more than 25. If the square root of n has to be more than 25, if we were to square both sides, if we were to square both sides, what we end up is that what we end up saying is that this n, whatever that is n is, that n has to be more than 625 has to be more than 625. So this n over 25 is essentially some number more than 625 over 25. Well, if, it's, if this number is more than 625, I can continue doing it here or we can do it down here. n over 25, n over 25 now we know, has to be, has to be some quantity 625 plus something more than 625 divided by 25. Well, if it's something more than 20, if you're dividing some number that is more than 625 by 25, the result has to be more than 25. And the question simply was, which of the following could be the value of this quantity? Well, if it's more than 25, it can be 22, 23, 24, or 25. Obviously, there's only one answer left. Which of the following could be? We don't know what the exact value is, obviously, because we don't know what n is. But given the fact that n is more than 625, if you divide some number that is more than 625 by 25, the result will be more than 25. And the only answer choice that is more than 25 is answer choice E, 26. That's your answer. Let's go on to the next one. Number 100 and 77. Number 100 and 77. See what they have to say. In 177, we are told that the price of a stock, price of a stock, goes up by k percent. We are also told that the earning per share earning per share of this stock goes up by m percent. We are told that the value, the, the k is more than m. We are told that. And the question simply is, let's put down the question down here somewhere, by what percentage, by what percent did the price earning ratio go up this price earning ratio by what percentage did it go up let's use letter P for price to represent price and E for earnings now listen to me listen very carefully because this is about to get quite nasty there are two ways we can go about solving this problem. Okay, as I said, listen very carefully. There are two ways we can go, go about solving this problem. It's an algebra problem. One way actually is to, so, to solve the problem okay, is actually what we just said. It's an algebra problem. We can do it in a classical way, in a traditional way, orthodox way, conventional way, algebraic way, academic way. That's one way. Another way, but if you go that route, unless you're very good in algebra and unless you can concentrate on unless you can concentrate, unless you're able to concentrate under immense pressure of time, you will end up making some careless mistake if you go that route, if you go the algebraic route. The algebraic route, the traditional route, the academic route is only for those people who are very good in algebra. If you're not very strong in algebra, your only salvation, your only hope is to plug in numbers 
and convert this problem into an arithmetic problem, which is what we're going to do here. So let's get going. Enough of the talk. Let's get going. Plug in some numbers. So we are told that the price has gone up by k percent. So we're going to pretend that the initial price, let's pretend that the initial price is uh, is uh, $100 and the new price P1 is going up by k percent. Let's plug in some number for k. So we're plugging, we're plugging in 100 P, 100 for P, the starting price that is P0, price P0, the starting price, we're plugging in 100. And how, how much do you want it to go up by? Let's, let's make it go up by 10 percent. Let's make it go up by 10 percent. So we're plugging in 10 for k. So if it goes up by 10 percent, it's going to go from 100 to 110. Then we have a earning, price earning ratio. Price earning ratio, we are told that it goes up by M percent. I'll tell you what, I could, I, we could actually do 10, we, go, we could go from 10 to, 10 to, uh, we, I want to raise it by 5 percent, because we are told that K has to be more than M. So if, we, if we're going to pretend that K is 10 percent, the increase in price is 10 percent, and the increase in earning per share has to be less than 10 percent, I was going to use in 5 here. But if you could put used in five here, and if you put in ten for e, if you put in ten for e, uh, starting price earning ratio, then five percent of the ten is going to be nasty. So I'm going to pretend that the price earning ratio in the beginning was 100. It goes up by five percent and becomes 105. And let's pretend that the price of the stock was 1,000 and goes up to 1,100. Are you with me so far in the story? So we are plugging in 1,000 for the starting price. The final price is 1100, hence the increase of 10%. The price earning ratio in the beginning was 100. It goes from 100 to 105. Let's see what we can do here, okay? We are, we are done talking. So the initial ratio, the ratio that we start out with, is the original price, which is P0, over the original earning, which was, in our case, was 100. So it's simply t it's 10, it's 1000, it's 1000 over 10. The new one is right here, 1100 over 5. The new ratio, okay, now pay attention very, pay attention, the new ratio is right here, it's 1100 over 105, 11, 1100 over 105, which can be written as, this is where the tricky part comes in, which is where you have to pay attention, which can be written as 1050 plus 50, 1100 can be written as 1000, 1050 plus 50, why not, over 105. As I said, stay within the story. This part, and which in turn can be written as 1050 over 50 plus 50 over. Are you with me? This, this as you can see, 1050 over, it should not say over 50, it should say 105, right here is the 105 at the bottom. 1050 plus 105, that's just 10. 10 plus 50 over 105. So the question is, how much did the ratio go up? We started with the, we started with the original ratio of 10, and we find, find, we find we end up with a new ratio of 10 plus that amount. So it, in other words, the ratio has gone up from here to here, from R0 to R1, it has gone up by this amount, 50 over 105. And the question simply is, by what percentage did the price earning ratio go up? It went it has gone up by this amount, 50 over 150, 50 over 105. So now, what the question boils down to is, what the question boils down to is, I need the room, let's do it over there. What the question boils down to is this, 50 over 105 is what percent of 10? That's what it is, 50 over, 50 over 105 is what 50 over 105 at what percent of 10? Because 10 is what we started out with. That was a change. This is the change. This is the original ratio. So this new ratio that we have is simply the original ratio plus 50 over 105. So that is the change. This amount, this increase in the ratio, this increase in the ratio is what percentage of the original ratio? That's what it is. So 50 50 over 105 a is means equal, what is our unknown, percent means over 100, of means times 10. We just have to solve for x. 
and I and I, we are rapidly running out of room here. And if we solve if we solve this equation, if we solve this equation for x, let's do it right here. If we solve this equation for x, we can end up we end up with x is equal to x is equal equal to 50 times 100 over 105 over 10. 50 times 100. 50 times 100 over 105 divided by 10. 105 divided by 10. We are almost there. We can knock out this 10 with this 50 here. I see 105 and we see 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. So we end up with 20 over 21. It's 5 times 20. 5 times 20 is 100 over 21. This is our final answer. 100 over 21. This is what we this is what we call the punchline. I'm not sure if punchline is supposed to be hyphenated or not, but don't worry about it. That's our answer. 100 over 21. All we have to do now is to go through the answer choices, and wherever we see wherever we see p, we're going to replace it with 1,000. Wherever we see k, we replace it with 10. Wherever we see well, actually p and e, we're not going to see in the in the problem. Wherever we see m, we're going to replace it by 5. k and I, m are the only two variables that are going to appear. k is 10, m is 5. We replace the variable by the respective value that we plugged in until we find 100 over 21. What can we do it? I need the room, obviously. Uh, let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. <coughs> Answer choice A says, answer choice A says K over M. Well, K is 10 and M is 5. That's not going to give us 100 over 21, is it? Now, had it been a real exam, of course, we wouldn't be so damn silly to actually write everything out. We just look at it. K over M is, is I, 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 I erase everything. K was 10. It's right here. K is 10 and M is 5. Obviously, K over M is not going to be 100, 100 over 21. That was a waste of time. B says k minus m. Again, k minus m is not going to be 100 over 21, is it? It's silly. C says C says 100. This is where we have to slow down. k minus m over 100 plus k. This is where we have to slow down. Okay, take your time. Otherwise, you're going to make a mistake. The very first thing we notice is that at the bottom you're going to get 110. So we're going to end up at 100 times k minus m. k is 10, m is 5. k is 10, m is 5. So it's this over 110. 110. We do get 21 at the bottom. If we divide top and bottom by 5, this is going to become, no, this is going to become, this is not 21, this is 22. This is 22. We need 21, we need 105. That's not it. It doesn't matter what's on the top. It doesn't matter what's on the top. On the bottom, we need 21. We're getting 22 there. That's not it. Let's look at <coughs> let's look at D and E. Answer choice D says answer choice D says 100 times k minus m, same as this, over over. Oh, there you go, 100 100 plus m. You see, we needed we needed 105 here, not 110. This is gives us 22. We needed 105. So 100 minus m is 105. So it's 100 times k minus m. k is 10 minus m is 5 over 105 over 105, which is exactly what we had here. 5 times 20, which is 100. And we divide top and bottom by 5. We end up with 21, 100 over 21. 100 over 21. There you go. That's your answer. Answer is D. Answer is D. Now, if you try out the E part, in E, what's going on is that they're just playing around with you. In, in C, we end up with 110. In D, we end up with 105 that we need. And in E, we're going to end up with 115 because in E, they have K plus M. K plus M is 10 plus 5 is 15. And there's 100 here, so 115. It's not going to work. At the bottom, we need 105. The answer is D. Now I'm seriously debating whether or not to actually go dive into the algebraic solution to this problem. Algebraic solution is very nasty. Tell you what, tell you what, I am actually going to do the algebraic solution. 
but if you like you can start the video now that's it if you don't want to deal with the algebra if you cannot broke it if you cannot broke the algebra that I'm about to do if you cannot broke it if you cannot handle it if you cannot tolerate it if you cannot endure it if you cannot stomach it then algebra is not made for you so you can stop the video that's it you're done for those of you who are curious this is not something we will do in the real exam never in a million years I myself would never do it algebraically because it's not worth it it's not worth it purely for learning purposes if you're interested I'm going to continue for the next five ten minutes and we're going to do it algebraically but I'm warning you it is going to get very nasty and I'm not going to explain every single step of the way because if I need to stop and if I have to, if I need to stop and explain every single step of the way then it's not made it's not made for you you're not meant for it you understand so here we go the algebraic way we are done with this part I'm going to give you an unobstructed view for a little bit while I have my tea Okay, here we go. Oh, I shouldn't have erased the question. Okay, now remember, it comes with a caveat. What, I'm, what we are about to do does come with a caveat. Did we learn these words, brook and caveat? I'm sure we did. What does caveat mean? Some people pronounce it as caveat. Some people pronounce it as caveat. They are both considered correct pronunciations. They are both considered correct pronunciations. A caveat is a warning. Day 63. It's a fair warning. Do you understand? It's a disclaimer. A day 63. Just type in a vocabulary, vocabulary words for GMAT. That's only in the event that you're interested in improving your vocabulary. If you are interested in, in wor working on your vocabulary as well, just type in vocabulary words for GMAT or vocabulary words for GRE for those of I don't know why you'll be watching this video then. Uh, day 63 and this video will pop right up where we learn the word caveat, day number 63. The word broke is also a word that we had learned a long time ago, I remember that. And that was on day number, as I said, broke means to be able to handle something, to be able to tolerate something, to be able to endure it, to stomach it. Day number 4. Vocab, day 4. So it, what we are about to do comes with a, with a caveat that uh, the is going to get nasty quite rapidly. So here is the original ratio. We start out with the original ratio of P0 over E0. And then the new price, the new price we are told it goes up by K percent. The price goes up by K percent. So let's make a note here first. Price, price goes up by K percent. In other words, the new price, the P1, is equal to the original price that we started out with plus the K percent, the K percent of the original price. Which of course can be written as, which of course can be written as P0 1 plus K over 100. Are you with me? Similarly, we are told that the earnings earnings go up, earnings go up by M percent, which will imply, which will imply that the, the new earnings, E1, is simply going to be the original earnings times the increase of M percent. Same exact, same exact procedure, that's it. So what's the change in the ratio? This is the new ratio, the new ratio, the new ratio, the R1, where can we put R1? The R1 is right here. I should have written it right there underneath it. It's E0 over 1 plus M over 100, which is which is the which is the which is the new earnings, which is the new earning, and this is the new price. I'm going to raise all of this now. This is the new price. So this is the new ratio. There you go, that's your new ratio. The question is, the question is, how much does this ratio change from here? First we have to figure out the difference. So it's going to be the change in ratio, the change in price earning ratio, 
is equal to the new ratio which is R1 minus the old ratio. The R1 is right here which is P0 over 1 plus K over 100 You still have a chance to stop the damn thing. If you, you still have the time to stop the bloody thing, nobody's. Do you understand? This is this is this is this is only for, for those people who, who enjoy doing the algebra. So that's the new ratio. So the change is this new ratio minus the old ratio, which is p naught over e naught. Let's let's write this down as as the common denominator. So we have e naught over 1 plus m over 100 and here we have p naught plus 1 plus k over 100 minus p naught this right here p naught times this quantity right here we have the e naught here so it's this quantity right here 1 plus m over 100 we need the room, so we're going to have to continue on the top. We're going to have to continue on the top from here. This is this is the change in ratio. This is the change. Let's continue this on the top. So the change, the change, which is the change in the new ratio minus the old ratio, is this quantity right here. And if we write this thing as a common denominator of 100, 100 is going to buy, end up in the bottom here, 100 is going to end up in the bottom here, 100 is going to end up in the bottom here, 100 is going to wipe out. So that step I'm not going to show you. Okay? You see when we take the common denominator, it's going to be 100 plus k over 100. This is going to be 100 plus m over 100. This is going to be 100 plus m over 100. 100 appears here, 100 appears here at the bottom, 100 appears here. I'm not going to write that, I'm going to skip that step. So it's going to be p naught plus 100 plus k, 100 plus k, plus or rather minus this is where I have to pay attention is the minus p naught over 100 plus m times 100 plus m that is over e naught plus 100 plus m let's take out the p naught common let's take out this p naught from here and here as a common factor and open the parentheses. So we end up with 100 plus k minus 100 minus m over, again we need the room so we have to raise stuff. As we, as, as we run out of room I have to raise stuff. Over e naught plus 100 plus m. I do not know why I'm doing this, do you understand? The 100 cancels out and we end up with k minus n. And we end up with p naught times k minus m over e naught times 100 plus m. And the question now is question now is this quantity is what percent of the original ratio which is R0 which is P0 over E0 that's what we have to do now that's it we're almost done we have to set it up the equation and solve it again I need the room obviously so now the question is this quantity that we end up with is what percentage of the original ratio so let's find out shall we so P naught over E naught, P naught over E naught, and for the, those of you who do not know what I've been saying here, this thing is read as naught, P naught, P naught. One does not read this as P zero, do you understand? It is read as P naught. And I'm going to very quickly digress here, in the event that you want to learn exactly what the word actually means, and what was, what was, what, uh, and some other synonyms and so forth, it's an interesting word. I know it's silly, but here we go. D74 is where we learned the word not and its synonym cipher. Cipher is a tricky word. Cipher is a tricky word which is a synonym of the word not. 
it is a tricky word because it has two meanings. This word has two meanings depending on how it is being pronounced. If it's pronounced as a cipher, then it's a synonym of naught, which means zero, nothing. It can also be pronounced as cipher, which has a different meaning entirely, but we're not going to go there, go there right now because we're not here for a vocabulary lesson. That's day number 74. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day number 74, and learn that word. So that's what we've been saying here. So P naught over E naught times K minus M over 100 plus M is, is means equal, what, let's call it, let's use a X for what, percent, percent means over 100, of means times P naught over E naught, right here, of P naught over E naught, because the question is, this quantity that we found here, P naught over E naught uh, times K minus M over M, 100 plus M, is what percentage of the original ratio, which is P naught over E naught. P naught over E naught, which is what we have here. What do we notice? The very first thing we notice is that, very first thing we notice is that this P naught over E naught appears both. The original ratio plays no role, it drops out. And we need the X, we are solving for X, and the answer is X equals to 100 times K minus M. K minus M over 100 plus M. Voila! Which is exactly what we found the answer to be when we use plug-in numbers. When we plugged in numbers. When we plugged in numbers, that's exactly what we found. If you recall, we had plugged in K, 10 for K and 5 for M and our final answer that we arrived at, our punchline was 100 over 21. Our punchline was 100 over 21. And if you put in here, 100 times K minus N, our K was 10 and our M was 5. 10 minus 5 is 5 over 100 plus M, M is 5. So it's 100 plus 5 is 105. That's exactly what we had found. That was the answer, if you recall. And we divide top and bottom by 5 and this becomes 21. And we end up with 100 over 21, which is what our answer was. That's, that's answer choice, this answer choice, whatever the letter happens to be, I forgot. I believe it was answer choice, I don't want to say the wrong letter, I think it was answer choice D. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Don't hate me. Bye now.